Hello friends, this video on respiration in plants part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us see what happens in the next step. So with succinate you start in presence of an enzyme, succinate dehydrogenase. The product formed is fumarate or fumaric acid. So you start with succinate which is a 4 carbon compound and you form fumate or fumaric acid fumarate which is again a 4 carbon compound and during this process FADH2 is released like the way you have NADH which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide similarly you have FADH2 which are again high energy molecules so one NADH can give rise to three ATP molecules and one FADH2 can give rise to two ATP molecules so these are all high energy molecules so here the product formed is fumarate or fumaric acid and also FADH2 which in turn will help in ATP synthesis. In step 7, fumarate or fumaric acid is the starting material. Hydration occurs here. Now hydration is the opposite of hydrolysis. In hydrolysis we remove one molecule of water and in hydration we add one molecule of water. So here we will add one molecule of water to fumarate and what happens let's see. So this is fumarate which is a 4 carbon compound. So when you add a molecule of water to this. So you add one molecule of water. So this is how fumarate looks like. So this is how fumarate looks like. So the double bond exists between these two carbon atoms. But as soon as you add water to this, what happens? This double bond breaks. So this double bond breaks and what happens? This H2O comes up here as H and OH. So this is what will happen. The double bond is broken now and water comes as bonds of hydrogen and OH. So these bonds are formed and what is this whatever is formed that is again a 4 carbon compound and this is known as malic acid or malate whatever you call this. So this is your malic acid. So malic acid is formed from fumarate by hydration and the enzyme which is involved here is fumarase and the products formed is malic acid or malate. Now the last step of Krebs cycle where the malic acid is going to be the starting material and here enzyme malate dehydrogenase acts to convert it into oxaloacetic acid. Now please remember oxaloacetic acid was the one which combined with the citric acid I mean, which combined with uh, acetyl coenzyme A to form citric acid right. So here again you are forming the same oxaloacetic acid. So once oxaloacetic acid is formed it will combine with acetyl coenzyme A and it will again form citric acid. That is why it is said that citric acid is the first product and also it is the final reactant that is the final product which is formed again is also also citric acid. So in this step what will happen? This is malic acid. So 4 carbon this is H, this is H, this is H and this is OH. So this is malic acid. Now malic acid in presence of malic dehydrogenase it will form another 4 carbon compound but with a double bond. So this is oxaloacetic acid and during this process NADH is also released. So NADH is also formed during this step. So the products formed are oxaloacetic acid and NADH and NADH is further utilized for ATP synthesis. Right? So this is all about the Krebs cycle, the multi-step process where the main motto is to convert the acetyl coenzyme A to a number of compounds that is it has to undergo a lot of decarboxylation so that complete oxidation of pyruvate can take place 
and side by side so many energy rich molecules are produced so here if you see in quite a number of steps we saw that nadh were produced fadh2 was produced atp gtp were produced so at a lot of places energy rich molecules were produced so now that we have understood all the eight steps separately it is time to look at the conclusion so this is how the entire krebs cycle looks like right we started the first product which was formed was citric acid and again when the entire cycle completes oxaloacetic is formed which combines with acetyl coenzyme a to form citric acid again so that is how this it is a cycle and that is how it keeps on repeating to give its yield so now let us see what all was formed during this process now if you remember in the previous step that is in pyruvate oxidation two molecules of acetyl coenzyme a was formed right because during glycolysis one glucose okay let me write it clearly during glycolysis one glucose gave rise to two pyruvic acid or two pyruvate and again each pyruvate gave rise to one acetyl coenzyme a so two pyruvate gave rise to two acetyl coenzyme a now each acetyl coenzyme a is going through the cycle so when two acetyl coenzyme a will go through the cycle so everything will get doubled so let us see what all is produced by one acetyl coenzyme a so if one acetyl coenzyme a goes through the krebs cycle how many nadh are formed how many fadh2 are formed and how many atp are formed so let us have a look at that so if you talk about one acetyl coenzyme a where all nadh is formed one two and three so there are three places where nadh is formed so three molecules of nadh is formed if you talk about fadh2 it is formed only once so only one molecule of fadh2 was formed if you talk about atp it is also formed only once this atp is the step which is referred to as gtp because gtp one molecule of gtp will form one molecule of atp so one atp is formed so this is with one acetyl coenzyme a but actually we have two acetyl coenzyme a so with two acetyl coenzyme a how many nadh will be formed six how many fadh2 will be formed two and how many atps will be formed two so this is the energy yield of krebs cycle now many of you might get confused with the numbers because in many textbooks this nadh is not six but it is eight that is because i'll tell you clearly during glycolysis what happened two nadh was produced but after glycolysis there was another step pyruvate oxidation so during pyruvate oxidation again two nadh was produced so till now if you consider total how many nadh was produced two during glycolysis two during pyruvate oxidation and six during krebs cycle so total 10 nadh molecules have been produced till now right so now in the next step what are we going to see in the next step we will actually see how these nadh and fadh2 molecules are utilized for atp synthesis because i am telling since long time that these high energy rich molecules are important because they will produce atp so now we have to see how atp is produced from nadh and fadh2 because as you see almost 10 molecules of nadh and two molecules of fadh2 are produced till now so how do we convert all these into atp because if one nadh is going to produce three atp molecules it is going to be huge energy right because we have almost 10 nadh so that would be almost 30 atp molecules so that's why we need to know how that conversion takes place and that is why we will talk about the electron transport system so that is the last step of aerobic respiration where we will see how exactly the process of atp synthesis take place thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again